In this video, we're going to create a Python program to validate Canadian postal codes. So Canadian postal codes have a particular format. They are a letter followed by a number, followed by a letter with a space in between, and then a number followed by a letter, followed by a number. And all Canadian postal codes have this format. So we'll create a Python function to validate that a string contains a Canadian postal code. We'll call the function is underscore postal code and the function will have a single parameter, the potential code itself. The first thing we'll do is check to see if the string is seven characters in length, because we have exactly seven characters here, the three letters and numbers and the space in between. So we're gonna have a check here. We'll say if the length of the code doesn't equal seven, we're going to return false because the string can't possibly contain a valid postal code if it doesn't contain the correct number of characters. Next, we'll check to see if this first character here is a letter. And we're going to use the is alpha method to help us do that. We'll have if not code at index zero is alpha. So if this is the case, we're again going to return false. So code at index zero is gonna give us this first character in the string here. And is alpha is going to return true if it's a letter. So if it's not the case that this character is a letter, we have an invalid postal code and we're going to return false. Next, we'll check to see if this next character here is a digit, so a number from zero to nine. Now Python does have some methods like isDigit and isNumeric, but these methods will include certain characters like the squared character as digits and as a numeric character. So instead, we'll actually just check to see if the character is in a string that contains the digits from zero to nine. So we'll have if not code at index one is in, and we'll have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If this is the case, we're going to return false. So if it's not the case that this next character in the string here is in this string here, that contains the 10 digits that we're looking for, then we're going to return false because again, it's not a valid postal code. Next, we're gonna to check to see if the next character in the string is a letter. And we can just reuse this logic. So we'll copy this and paste it here and we'll just update the index. So we're gonna to check to see if the third character in the string at index two there is a letter. And if it's not a letter, we're going to return false because again, it can't be a valid postal code if that's the case. Next, we're gonna to check to see if this character here is a space character. So we'll have if the code at index three, the fourth character in the string is not the space character, then we're going to return false. Now for these last three characters, it's very similar to this situation here. Here we had letter, number, letter, here we have number, letter, number. So we'll actually copy some of this logic here so we can just rearrange it. So down here, we'll paste this and we have number, letter, number. So I'll copy this and paste it up here. And now we have a check for number, letter, number. And I'll just update these indexes here. So we'll check the character at index four to see if it's a number the character at index five to see if it's a letter, and the character at index six to see if it's a number. Then finally, we're going to return true if all these checks are okay. So if we run through all these checks and none of them cause us to return false, then at this point, we've exhausted all possibilities and the string must contain a valid postal code. So we're going to return true in this case. Next, we can test our function out. So down here, I'll make a list of potential codes. So I'll have codes is equal to, and I'll start the list off with a single valid postal code. So we'll have L, four, G, six, H, seven. Then we'll loop through the codes and we'll print out the code and the return value of calling the function with that code. So we'll have four code in codes, print out the code itself, and the result of calling the is postal code function with that code. So we'll save this and then try our program out. And we get back that this is a valid postal code because the function returned true. 
Now let's try out some postal codes that are not valid. So I'll put in a postal code that has one less character than required. So we'll have L four G space, and then just six and H. We'll try a postal code that has a letter where a digit is expected. So we'll have L T G space six H seven. So here we have a letter where a digit is expected. We'll also try a postal code where we have a digit where a letter is expected. So we'll have L four G six and we'll have five, seven, and we'll try these possibilities out. So we'll save this and run our program again. And we get that all three of these cases here return false. And that makes sense because none of these are valid postal codes. So there are some more sophisticated ways we could solve this problem. For example, by using regular expressions, but this is how we can write a simple Python program to check whether a Canadian postal code is valid or not. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.